Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at the Unity Asset Package Jigsaw Puzzle Creator Kit by Alebi. So let's go over to Unity and take a look to see what this offers. So here we are in Unity and as always if you've purchased the package you go up to Window, you go down to Package Manager, change this to My Assets, at least that's what it reads in Unity 2020.1, they might change it in a future version. And then once you do that, when you change that to My Assets, you'll see all the assets you've purchased and Jigsaw Puzzle Creator Kit. You just select it, download, and import. You'll get two things when you do that. One, you'll get this Jigsaw Puzzle folder. So like this is the top level folder. So you'll see Jigsaw Puzzle folder. And the second thing is this tools menu will be created. And this is really what we're going to focus on because this is how you actually create the jigsaw puzzle and it's actually a very simple process it takes maybe five minutes i will say this though i wasn't really happy with the documentation that came with this that this manual here because there's really two types of documentation there's a reference guide which is more technical and just basically gives you like definitions and things like that and then there's an instructional manual which really takes you step by step how to do something so one is a reference one is instruction this kind of combines it together so you'll have like these definitions right in the middle of instructions i personally found it made for a very dense read and since you're looking at windows that are proprietary to this package it's not even something that you're used to Having said that, the creator was very receptive and very responsive when I reached out to him and I told him that I'd purchased this package and that I was having trouble with the documentation. He responded very quickly, gave me additional documentation, gave me a link to a video that's on YouTube, and it was sufficient to show me how to do this. So it is easy to use. It's just that the documentation, in my humble opinion, could be better. But again, the creator was very responsive and gave me additional information. And clearly the information was good because now I know how to use this. So anyways, what you do, you want to have a new scene. So if you haven't, you go up to File and then New Scene. And then you come to Tools and you do Puzzle Generator. This is the only window it takes to make a new jigsaw puzzle. There are a few scripts we'll have to attach after the fact, but that's pretty easy to do. So first, puzzle image, you click on select, and these are all the images that they provide with you to begin with. So let's go ahead and click on ducks, we'll use that one. How many do you want this broken into? Let's say four by four, you can make it whatever amount you want. Anchoring can be top left or center. Sub elements, so this is how they link together. So you can use this typical kind of notch. There's also a pointed one, we'll go with the classic. Now you can change the size of the notch relative to the piece. So you can see the preview here. So if we change base element size, you can see that the sub element is getting smaller. Okay, so you're changing the base element. So you're changing the piece relative to the sub piece. So uh, generally speaking, if you're gonna have a lot of pieces, you're probably gonna have a small connector. If you're gonna have less pieces, you're probably gonna have a larger connector. Sprite size, atlas size. Atlas, I'll show you what that is in just a second. Generate background, generate shadows, pretty self-explanatory. Where do you want to save it and what do you want the name to be? And as well as use material, yes or no. You know, do you want to use one? And that's about it. And then generate puzzle. Okay, and there it is. Now, by default, the, the uh the end user camera, as far, or should I say the developer camera, isn't always lined up where it should be. The only reason why it's lined up is because I was already testing this out. Okay. So what happens is this, though, is offset. So even though the developer camera I moved, so the point of view that, that you can see this from, this camera still isn't lined up. So make sure you line it up, center it. And then the other thing is move it back because this default placement doesn't seem to work with the default placement of the camera. And what will happen is pieces will be like cut off to the side. So you might have to move the camera back a bit. Okay, so just like that, you now have a jigsaw puzzle, but it's already pre-assembled. So that means you need to add the script that then breaks up the piece and, or should I say scatters the piece, it's already been cut up, just it's already assembled. So it will scatter the piece and add the 
click functionality so you can drag and drop the pieces. So how do you do that? So you go to system scripts, you click on your camera, and then you click on game controller and you put it there. Two key things to point out, game camera and puzzle. Game camera, puzzle, not a coincidence. You take your main camera and apply it to game camera. You take your puzzle and you apply it to puzzle. There's a few other settings like game rules. You can expand this, time limit, hint limit, invert rules, music settings. Do you want music to be playing? Me main music, win, lose. Sound settings. Do you want sounds to play when you grab, when you drop, when you assemble? GUI settings, pause, win, lose, hints, that kind of thing. And background settings. This is really mainly if you want to take this image and have it show translucent and a preview. So basically, here's a preview of the image you're trying to assemble. I personally wouldn't use that because I think that really kind of puts it on too much of an easy mode because I personally find the fun to be finding all the corner pieces and the edge pieces and trying to figure out what it looks like. Yes, with the jigsaw puzzle, you typically have the cover of the puzzle that you could look at, but I think that putting the image right there is a little bit too easy. But again, that is purely subjective. You can do whatever you want when you make this. And then uh, that's it. So you can set the level of transparency. And now, if I haven't forgotten anything, that should be all it would take to make this work. So let's run this. And actually, I believe the reason why it's already partially assembled is because I was testing this and I didn't make any changes. So it um, basically there is a save file. You don't see it right now, but usually there'll be a message down here about the save file. So if you want, what we'll do We'll just go to new scene and we'll just do it quickly one more time. So tools, puzzle generator, select an image. We'll take the flower this time. Columns, rows, let's say five by five. Select, we'll do the pointed sub element this time. And then again, we'll leave the other, other settings the same. Generate puzzle. There we go. Click on our main camera. And we do learn by repetition, so you got to see this twice. Then again, like I said, move it back or else images will be cut off. I'm pretty sure that's what these two blocks are here. These are the scatter locations for the, uh, for the puzzle pieces. And then we run it. Oops, sorry. I forgot. We take the game controller and we take the main camera and we take the puzzle. And now we can do this. So you can see that adding that piece really does make a difference. So this one, again, you already have it partially assembled, but this time it's just random chance and not because I was already messing around with it those two already assembled. So that's about it as far as the demonstration. Now there is rotational functionality. So if we go to assets, jigsaw puzzle, and then we choose this one, puzzle rotate. No, we're not going to save. If I run this, so when I click on a piece, see how it's rotating? It wasn't doing that automatically, so there must be a way to get rotation by script. So that's something you might need to dig into. And there are other features too. This was meant to just be the broad strokes of how you get started and create your own puzzle. So I think that should about do it for this demo. If there is uh, anything else you'd like to see, just let me know. So in the comments, let me know if there's other packages that you'd like to see me review. I think it's very important that people get comfortable using Unity asset packages. Yes, we all try to make games on the cheap, but the reality is unless you know how to do everything, you're probably going to have to purchase something. So I'm trying to help you make informed decisions by giving you uh, a preview of what the packages hold and that uh, you can then uh, you know, see how easy it is to integrate it into a project. And every single package I have purchased, uh, none of these have been gifted to me by the developers. So I have no vested interest in trying to make anything look good or bad. 
Um, my interest is in trying to help you because these are the kind of things that I wish existed when I started working um, on my projects that I wish I knew just how easy it was to integrate some of these packages. And again, in this case, I was able to give you the heads up that I personally found the documentation to be very lacking, but that's offset by the fact that the uh, creator was very responsive and gave me additional documentation. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it yet. The current going price if i recall correctly this is 25 dollars usd i bought it on sale i think it was part of the new year's sale so i got it at like half price and that's the other thing keep an eye on the unity store because they very often will have sales and it will make a huge difference as to whether or not something is affordable and again it's absolutely your choice what you feel is worth spending on or not so I think that's about it. So I hope that you found this useful. Let me know again if there's any other packages you'd like to see me review. And uh, please stay safe and please enjoy the rest of your day.